Hi, my name is Manny Vasquez, and today I'm going to teach you about trapezoidal method and midpoints in respect to Riemann sums. Obviously, I'm going to teach you about midpoints first because I assume that you all have some background knowledge of Riemann sums, mainly concerning left point and right point Riemann sums, but today I'm going to teach you about midpoint. You all already should know the proper notation for Riemann sums, which are sigma sine f of x with a subscript of i, which is representative of multiple heights and delta x which obviously represents width in this. So that's just the proper notation. And I'm going to show you an example. My first example is y is equal to x squared plus 2 from negative 8 to 0 with four subintervals. I've already started to find delta x. You will note that I have actually found delta x incorrectly and I get negative 2 instead of the 2 that I'm supposed to get because I swapped that around and I just messed up my signs. I'm keeping up the proper notation though, well not really because I'm still swapping the signs, but um, yeah, I get negative 2 as my delta x, which again should be 2, and then I'm just setting up, I'm just setting up the problem so I have my heights to add up, which is what you should do in the sort of rectangle problem. I'm drawing the graph, x squared plus 2 is obviously a parabola, but because we're only doing from negative 8 to 0, obviously it's only going to be half a parabola. So for midpoints what you do is literally you go into the middle of the two points that you're given. So because we have a chain a delta x of two, we're gonna have to go from Hmm. Yeah, because we have a delta x of two for four sub intervals, we're gonna have to go from negative eight to negative six, which gives us the middle of negative seven. And then we have to plug that back into the heights and for that we just plug it back into the original equation so I'm going to plug negative 7 back into x squared plus 2 right now I'm just writing everything else out so Getting my answers, 51, 27, 11, and 3. Adding all those up, then multiplying it all by my delta x to get the answer, 184. It's supposed to be 184, but again, I messed up my signs. So, sorry for not being helpful on that, but it's a good mistake to watch because you always need to watch out for your signs and you have to be really careful about that because it can really mess up the whole problem really and now I'm moving on to my second example and my second topic which is trapezoidal method and for this I'm going to use a trig example which is h of x is equal to sine of x from 0 to pi with 4 subintervals I'm going to start off by drawing the graph everybody should be familiar with the sinusoidal graph so far and everybody should know that from 0 to pi, it's just going to be half of it. So it's going to be the first half, the upper half. The four subintervals will be as follows 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 4, along with pi at the very end. I'm doing my four subintervals. I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing my four trapezoids. And trapezoids are pretty easy to do. All you have to do is draw a line up from each point and then just connect them using a little slant, which is pretty much what a trapezoid just looks like. Now I'm showing you the area of a trapezoid by just doing it. The area of a trapezoid will always be base times height 1 plus height 2 over 2. It's height 1 over height 2 because you have two heights, unlike in a rectangle where the heights are the same because of a little slant of course. Um, an important thing to note about trapezoidal method and the midpoint method too is that they're both more accurate than left and right point Riemann sums. Trapezoidal method is obviously more accurate than rectangles in general because it gives extra leeway to find to not overestimate or underestimate. It's still not as accurate as integrals that you will learn later but it's very accurate as an approximation. And now 
I'm following through with fun <laughs> with my trig. Um, trig is something that's really important to learn and to memorize. And so, right here I'm just plugging and chugging, which is what you do with a lot of the Riemann sums and trapezoidal methods. You just plug and chug a lot as soon as you got it. And I'm just finding out the areas of my first four trapezoids, of my four trapezoids. <laughs> you can see me get a little rusty with my trick slowing down and stuff. Um, but, I'll have to breeze through it. Yep. You put it all over two because everything is visible by two. And then our delta x which I found to be oh now's what I'm putting my delta x and delta x will be pi over 4 so then pi over 4 times everything that I got added up I think it's good practice for you to try to add it up yourself so I will leave it unsimplified at this moment and hope that you guys can simplify it hopefully you guys are following along in general with this and with the other calculus videos. So that's the area in an unsimplified form.